This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on February 27th, 2017. Questions and answers today. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, everybody, uh, good afternoon. It's one o'clock and uh, time to start. Now, uh, all of you should have seen the email I sent out yesterday about uh, sending your questions in. We've got a few here we want to take care of before we take questions from the floor, just to make sure that we get them in in the first 20 minutes in case the uh, video goes blah, which has happened on occasion. So, the um, the first thing that uh, we're going to look at is we have a question here about uh, making tabs uh, permanent. In other words, uh, when you open your browser, be it Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Mozilla, whatever you have, if you would like to have three tabs open when you open your browser, we can do that. Or so you can have Google. You can have Yahoo, you can have MSN, all open at once when your browser opens. You can have every article of Wikipedia on. <laughs> yeah, you, whatever you like. So James is going to uh, show you how to do that right now. Tay, you're it. Yay. Are we allowed tag backs? No. Okay. So, uh... Tabs are such a wonderful thing because before, um, way back when, uh, it would always open up a new window. There were no new tabs. You could have 100 pages and there would all be different windows <laughs> and it would slow down your computer. Uh, tabs do to some extent but not as badly as just having a full window open. It's much neater. Um, so we're going to start off with Chrome. I'm going to open up a new Chrome for reasons. Okay, so Grandpa has it set up that he opens up on the new tab Google where it also has a couple pages that you go to a lot on on here as well. Um, but what we're going to do is those three dots underneath the X button for close, you would click that and go all the way down to settings. From here on on startup, you will set pages and make sure that your open a specific page um, is checked. So click set pages. And you'll already have your one page here. Um, that would be whatever you normally open in Google, MSN. Um, so, um, if you just type in, we'll do www.msn.com and close that out. When we restart, it will open these two tabs at the same time. It will open Google and MSN at the same time. And let's do uh, www.yahoo.ca. Oh, so you have to have the full address in there then? Yeah. Well, the, if a page will open without the dub dub dub, mm -hmm. just put it in that way yeah. as yahoo.ca. Yeah. If it doesn't need the dub 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 in the address line, if it needs the address, uh, the dub 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 in the address line, you have to put it in. But 90% uh, of all pages today don't need dub dub dub. I mean, it's just a good habit to get into. So we'll hit OK. And then I'll just close this one and reopen a new Chrome. That didn't work because. Why would you want three at any time? 
Um, in case you find like, um, let's say you feel like I want to learn something. Um, I want to learn why, who, who made the first airplanes? And how did, did they work? Or if you want to be me, what was the first hard drive and how big was it? <laughs> By the way, it's bigger than a semi-truck <laughs> for most of them. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to close your Gmail for, for this to work. All right, let me, there we go. So, once old, old Google Chrome has been closed, the next time it opens, I have Google, MSN, and Yahoo open. Now, you, you asked why you might want that. Yeah. Uh, you can have your mail open. If you have yep. Gmail, mm -hmm. yeah. go to that. Oh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, go ahead, James, oh. and uh, navigate to Gmail. Yeah. There, I navigated. <laughs> okay. Now, go, uh, go back into settings. Well, uh, uh, hang on. Go back into settings. Can I just do copy and paste? No. Okay. Three dots, settings. Now you will see somewhere there. And set pages. Uh, when you set page, where it says uh, use current page. Um. Well, it says and use current pages. So yeah. if you have like 20 tabs that you don't want. You're going to have all those 20 tabs as well, so yeah, be careful with that. In this instance, it will open Gmail because you've had it open. It knows how to open it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's changed, so I'll just close that. When you said okay, so is that like uh, saving it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, like you so don't you need have to. to put that in somewhere. Yeah, you, um, okay is um, right there. You'll see it at the bottom of the list. I'll go back yes. to it. But um, there we go, uh, Gmail opens right away. But yeah, three dots, settings, set pages. Okay, we'll be at the bottom of the uh -huh. of here. And we'll you just... can still enter another URL here too. If oh yeah, you can enter as many as you want. Let's do okay. www.youtube. <laughs> and if you want to take yeah. any out, you know, the person. Uh, if you just hover over yeah. the line that's already there, you'll see an X beside it. And it just takes it out. Yeah. yeah, you just hit this. Okay. This old X is the out. Okay. Yeah, like, um, let's say we don't we don't actually want YouTube, because one, I put it in wrong anyways. Um, we, we don't want that, so I'll just hover, hover over YouTube, and that oh, way at the end is an X. Like that. And it takes it up from the top? Yeah. yeah. Well, it won't take it off right away. Until you close until it. Until you close it and open it up again. Can you go over that head? You said you just go in hover, hovering over that one that you want to accept? Highlight it. Yeah, you, you hover over, just highlight the one that you want by just hovering over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then go over to X and then uh, click on oh, the X. I so, um, another way to get them in, I'm just going to close these, so we just want Gmail, Gmail now, close, open, and now only Gmail is our tab, because I got rid of the other two. But, let's say you want a specific page, um, good old Wikipedia, eh, uh, this guy sounds fun. Let's let's talk about it. Let's learn about this guy, Henry <laughs> something Pitman. <laughs> Whatever his middle name is, that guy. We want to learn about this guy. So, what you can do is highlight um, the address bar and right-click and hit copy. So now, if we go to the three dots and settings and set pages we can now right click and paste the URL right into the page and now we have the Wikipedia art, um, that will go right to that article 
So we hit OK. I'm going to close it. Gmail still opens, and there's good old Henry something Pittman. <laughs> Whatever his name is. <laughs> um, looks like a pretty interesting guy. But I, I, I don't want to read this guy anymore, so we can uh, go back to settings, set pages, and remove. I finished reading. I don't need to go back to him anymore. So I just removed him. We'll close. And come back. Now, Gmail is just the thing. Now, I'm going to show you this. You don't have to use this way. This way is technically, the way I just showed you is the slightly harder way. But there is a easier way. But Grandpa doesn't think that you guys will remember what the tabs are. I think you guys will, personally. So, we'll open up a new tab. We'll just go to good old YouTube. So now, if I right, right click on the tab of YouTube, I can hit pin tab. It will be above mute tab and below duplicate. We'll hit pin tab. And as you notice, it goes over here and it's just an icon. Um, so now, if I close this and open up Chrome, it will open up that mini tab as well. It's much easier, but you won't tell, you won't be able to tell what's, what's in it until you look at it. Um, and Gmail is still here as well. And then just to um, get rid of the pin tab, you just right click on it again and hit unpin. And then it just turns back to this and it won't come back. Um, so that's Chrome. Firefox is slightly different and it's um, how to do it. You can still do the pin tab thing. Uh, do do do. Open up YouTube. Oops. All right. So we'll just pin tab, close it. And this is on Firefox. Oh, it didn't keep it. You so and so. All right. I guess the pin tabs don't work on Firefox. That's what comes of not checking first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I checked. I just didn't bother looking at it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we like to give you the bloopers real time. If we edited out all the bloopers, it would be no fun. Alright, so... I guess the only way <laughs> to do it in Firefox is to open up these three lines, again, right below the X and go all the way down to options. It will be this gear looking thing. And if we go to, I might need to open up a tab for this to work. Let me just quickly go to YouTube. All right, and back to my options. So if I go to, when Firefox starts, show my home page. If I click on that, I sh why is it unhighlighted? If I go over here, drag this over here. Did they get rid of that option? That's stupid. Alright, screw you Firefox. What the hell? <laughs> This used to work, and it's not... Okay, hold up. Let's hold up here. <laughs> Firefox, why are you betraying me? I used to like you. Hello. Hi. Just looking. Okay. Have a seat. All right. Here's one YouTube. 
Let's get something else. Maybe I need more. Let's get good old Wikipedia. Let's go back to Henry something or other. Yeah, okay. Alright. Now, let's go to the menus. Options. When, why is it on high, like grayed out? It shouldn't be grayed out. <laughs> I don't know. You know, you're just not telling me. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> well, never mind. You can't do it in face in Firefox. Let's continue. <laughs> Unless you know what, what I'm doing wrong here. I'd have to go and look. Okay. I'd have to do the thing you didn't do. <laughs> Fine then. Let's all learn together. <laughs> Firefox multiple tabs. Mo mo it would help if I can spell multiple. Multiple tabs. Homepage, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Set multiple homepages. Perfect. Da, 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 da. Oh my god, this is a ring. And this is an old Firefox. God dang it. <laughs> Alright, next place. <laughs> Let's go straight to what's uh why is it showing me old <laughs> Firefox? I need new my Firefox. Alright, carry on. Can't do it on Firefox. <laughs> yeah, <my> okay. <laughs> if I figure it out, I'll show you next week. <laughs> Till then, Firefox isn't a thing. I hate you, Firefox. Alright, that's tabs done. Here's tag her it. <laughs> Okay. There is uh, there is another uh, browser that you can uh, set extra tabs in, and I'm going to show you this for you Windows Sevens folks, uh, because it's the same thing um, in uh, in Internet Explorer. Okay, um, you if you have Windows Seven, you have uh, Internet Explorer, and uh, so we will go there. And in Internet Options, okay, in Internet Options, if you open Internet Options, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the, the tab that opens will show you the tab that is opening, in this case, Google.com. Now, I can, put, I can put another one in there, and you sort of make a row of them. So I'm going to use Yahoo dot com and I'm gonna say okay to that actually isn't it yahoo.ca whatever okay. now when I open uh, Internet Explorer it opens a second tab Yahoo over there okay so you can do the same trick in Internet Explorer as you can in uh, in Chrome, it's just that you have to look in a different place for it. Now, um, in this instance, uh, what we're looking at is Internet Options to do that. And if any of you uh, know your Windows 7 a little better than most, you'll know that Internet Options is also part of Control Panel. So you can get to it from there. You don't even have to open the browser to do this. You can get to it from control panel. I'm going to take this out because I don't like it. And we'll just delete all this. And apply. You can either do apply or it doesn't matter. And um, there you go. Close all tabs. So that's how you would take care of that uh, extra, if you want extra tabs in Internet Explorer. Uh, let's move on from here. Let me get my mail back open again and we'll have a look. Uh, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, I have two external Dell backup units by Seagate. One of them's full and one of them's empty. 
Um, the question seems to be how to clean this up and maybe get the uh, um, get the. I'm here, Bob. Oh, okay. I am here. Yeah. Um, on the one that's got eighty percent, it shows it's eighty percent full. Yes. What we'd like to be able to do is clean it up and and re only save documents, pictures, and I don't know whether you can save favorites on that. So. Yes, you can. Um, okay. Um, we'll bring this down here, and I'm now Windows ten or Windows seven. Ten. Okay, it's just as easy. Um, if only we had a USB drive. <laughs> there we could show this. <laughs> yeah. I am going to navigate all the way through um, this Windows 10 setup to just show you where we're going to go with this. Okay. So uh, I'm navigating through this PC, and then I'm going to local disk C, and then I'm going to go to users, and I'm going to go to uh, use... Uh, user is your name. Yeah. User again. Okay. Now, in this case, once, once I've done that, I've opened the user folder, this one. But I'm just showing you, I'm navigating through the whole thing, okay, um, to get to where I want to be. And you can see that the user folder has all kinds of data in it, uh, particularly uh, your contacts, if you have them there, your desktop items, okay. If you have folders on your desktop, don't skip this. Because if you skip it, you will not back up those folders on the desktop. Okay. All right. So you want uh, now your documents, your downloads, favorites. Okay. That's what you're looking for as well. Um, to uh, where are we here? Faves. I don't have a lot of favorites here, but if you click on favorites, it'll show you all of the favorites you have saved. Okay. Um, and uh, there they are. Now, let us just say that the next thing I'm going to open here is your backup device. Okay. All right. So we've got we've got this this one. And let us just say that this is your backup device. It's my PC, but let's just say it is. Okay. Uh, you may not have any of this stuff here. If you don't, don't worry about it. Because what you're going to do is um, you're going to drag, say, your favorites icon from here to here. You just get a hold of it with your mouse and drag it over. And you'll see. Um, I doing it. Oops, um, it's trying to move it to a folder here and I don't want it to. Uh, yeah, you want me to make it easier for you? Yeah, let me make it easier. Alright, make it easier for me. Let's get rid of that, we don't need that. My god, your computer is so slow. No, Just while folder. you're doing that, uh, are we now... Uh, physically taking, dragging, uh, say the favorites folder across to the uh, to the Seagate. To your backup drive. No. Whatever its name is, it's yeah. your backup drive. Now that's okay for me because for some reason I haven't got anything. This yeah. is supposed to work automatically, and so Ed's is full. Um. So, but now we need to clean it up. With with the uh, with the Seagate software. Now here's the problem you're going to have. If you go ahead and remove stuff from that backup, your computer is just going to put it all back again because of that program, that Seagate backup program. It's going to realize that the stuff went missing. 
right? So it's going to back it up again. Great. Great. <laughs> um, that's why I'm not a great fan of automatic backups. Um, what you can do, because you have this second drive that you say is empty. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work automatically at all. Yeah, uh, then use that second drive to make these manual backups. Okay. okay. Now, uh, when you look at the drive itself, is it backing up these folders? Uh, in, as uh, you have uh, a mirror image of folders here to folders here? No. Or is it it's backing it up um, as a ball of data with a date? What, the one that's nearly full? I, yeah. can't, I can't tell you that. Yeah. Okay. If it's backing it up as a ball of data with a date, yeah. then you can remove the oldest ones. Say so if you've had it going for two years, you can remove for, from two years ago, okay? Um, and you'll be fine that way, it'll, it'll just give you more room. What's going to happen is the program is just going to make, when it makes its next backup next month, it will just make a new date and back up. Okay. All right? All right, that's good. Thank you. Um, I have a new folder to indicate. Yeah, now, if, you, if you're going to use your empty backup drive. Right. That's, it's just this simple. You want to open the, the empty backup drive on one side and your user folder on the other and just drag the stuff over. Okay. Just drag the stuff over. That's the easiest way to do it. Wonderful, thank you. I'll let you know if it works. Yeah, <laughs> please do. When a backup drive is full, then does it just start dropping what was first put in there as you or does it stop backing off? No, I think it nags you. <laughs> um, I think it's just if, it's, if it's full, 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 it's going to nag you. I'm full. What do you want to do about it? Um, now, as, as I said tomorrow, it all depends on how it's being done. If it's giving you a ball of data with a date, then what you're getting is called an incremental backup. In other words, it made a backup of your entire drive the first time around, and from then on, it's only backing up what changed. So, if you had a document that was originally backed up and you went in and made a small change in it, an incremental backup won't back up that whole document again, it'll just back up the change. If it's one line, that's all it will do. It's just that one line. So you have the old document, then you have to go looking for your change? No, no, no. It, it will it will change oh, to the new saying. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, if you have a pictures folder and it has 100 pictures in it and you add two more, it will only add the two pictures. It's incremental. Okay. It won't back up 102 pictures. It'll back up too. Unless you set it up properly. It just backs it, up everything. That's, now that's only if you set it up properly. <laughs> and believe me, I have wrestled with this for a dozen years. And different people have said, well, I set a backup, and look what it's doing now. I'm sorry. I please don't want to have anything to do with it because I don't understand it myself. What's, what some of these backup programs do. I just don't understand what the, what the author was trying to get at. I know what I want to do. I want to have a document, and if I make a change to it, I want that change backed up. If I want to have the document and a new document with a change on it, well, then now I've got two documents. You have to tell the computer that's what you want. If you don't tell it, it will only do one thing. All right. So is that why? I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> 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 when I take the chip out of my camera, then after I've taken pictures, and so I want to keep them before I lose the camera again. Yes. It only puts on the new pictures. It makes exactly it so. Older. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly so. That's um, 
that's your picture software doing that. That's your camera software doing it that way. Um, if you left the old pictures on the camera, yeah, right. it's only grabbing the new ones. Yeah. You can go into that camera after you've made your, your last backup. Let's say you, uh, you took a picture tomorrow and backed it up. Okay, You can go into the camera after that backup and remove all of those pictures that are on the camera. Okay, Just go to the camera, uh, it's delete option, and delete everything. And that will free that up. Or you can buy a new card for the camera and just install a new card. That's probably better. Now you've got, a, now you've got the backups on your computer and a backup on the old card. That's even better. New cards are so ex inexpensive. They're they're like you know twelve bucks. I mean that's not inexpensive. That's just hey for cheap. for sixteen gigs. Yeah. It's less than a buck a gig. Yeah. yeah. It's less than a buck a gig. So there you go. That's the way to handle that. Can we keep going on this? I made I did I made pictures on a disc. Yes. And I can't get them to play on Windows 10. Now I know I tried another one that I know played on Windows 7, and I've never touched it since. But I can't. I don't know how to make them come up on Windows 10. I don't know what to do. Um. I put the disc in and push every button I can think of, and no pictures. Boy, that's something that we would have to look at, Brenda. Maybe. Uh Maybe next week, bring the computer in with, or not next week, in two weeks, bring the computer in with you, and we'll look at it that way. Bring the disk and everything, and we'll look at it here. Oh, okay. All right? Uh, I'm sure it's just something simple that you're doing. Or not doing. Or not doing. Uh, and it may be something that you're not doing in how you burn the pictures on the disk. But we will know that when we look at it. Yeah, well, the first one played in Windows 7, and like I said, I've never touched it since. Yeah. So I tried it. And I can't even get it to yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look at it and see what what program it's. Maybe it doesn't have a program that it can play them with, uh, or it uh, the program has not been activated to play the pictures with. We'll look at it. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Um, so there we are in. Those, like click click the two lines above. Okay. No, that's, we did that one. Okay, we've done tabs. Here we go. Which one do you want? Let's do this one. Okay, uh, what's this one? This one was Facebook to photo album. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to open Facebook here. I think I can do it. Man, I haven't used Facebook in forever. <laughs> Also, while he's setting that up, I was playing my new VR system for a solid two weeks. <laughs> Virtual reality system that. Sure, I got you had your old password. Uh, oops. I could probably guess your password. There we go. Okay. Now, there's a picture right off the top. It's my birthday. <laughs> All right. There's a picture. Okay. Let's look at this and see if we can get it. It's, sa it's saved uh, in Facebook, and that means that it's on the cloud. The word we're looking for is local. Local meaning this computer. You want that picture, that picture, on this computer. Um, if you right-click... No, that was not right. Click on the picture first. And I right click on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James was correct in that you have to click on the picture first, and it will open in a player. And when you right click, you will get some options, and one of them is save image as. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll click on it. Now it's giving it a name, and that name is one this, zero zero zero. This <laughs> crazoid number dot jpg. Well, change the name. 
Okay. Interesting puppy dot JPG. Party dog. Or party dog or whatever. Okay. Give it your own name and it's going to save it into downloads because it's downloading from the internet. Okay? And it's just that simple. It's that's how you save pictures from a lot of these uh, social networks. Instagram is another one. You can save pictures from Instagram. Unless the author of the pictures has, um, has tagged the pictures as you can't save these, these are my property. Photographers, professional photographers do that. But somebody just uh, making photos uh, for his friends and family We'll put them up on Instagram, and anybody can download them. Okay, so this is this. We'll just go through this one more time here to make sure we understand it. So there's the picture. If if we ta um, tap on the picture, it's it's really what it's done is it has opened this picture in another program. It's this is not Facebook. This is another program. Right click, and we get some options. Um, to open this in a new tab, well, if you want to see the picture a little more clearly, you're going to do that. But save image as, or copy the image. If you can copy this image, and then you can move to a document, say a Word doc, and once you get there, you paste it, and it will paste this image into that document without downloading it. Well, it sort of downloads it in the background. But you don't see that. It's in a temp file. But that's one way to do it. So you can just copy that and put it right into your pictures if you want. Yes. Can you send an email to somebody? Yes, you can. Oh, why would you do that? Well, okay. Let's... Uh, uh, I would typically save the yeah. image for email. Yeah, I'd, I'd save it. Uh, but you can copy the image. And then um, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try and compose an email here and um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that paste it might be too big for Google no it did it pasted it because well because I've done this from web page to web page it pasted it in okay but it should do that for any document page that you open Wasn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> there are any problems for, um, I'm, I'm thinking from a virus kind of viewpoint, bringing stuff into the website? Um, no. If you're going to have um, an attack, something attack you from Facebook, it's going to do it long before you've downloaded it. Okay. Just simply by touching that picture. <laughs> Okay, if there was something in that picture um, that was going to be a problem for you, just simply touching it and, and opening it like I did, okay, that would be enough to compromise your computer. Right? And, and um, let me just show you this again. Um, by touching it, I mean, okay, going over here and clicking on it, and now you've opened it. Essentially, you have opened it locally on your computer. That's what will happen. If there was something wrong with this, if there was an attack coming, then immediately your web page would lock up and it would give you, start giving you this crazy message about how you've got to call Microsoft because you're infected, blah, 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 call this number right away, or we're going to lock your computer forever. Now, what happens if someone is on Facebook, but I have friends who are, and they download pictures from Facebook to their computer, and then they e email them to me. Like I said, it just simply by touching this, um, so if something was going to happen, it would have happened. Uh, sending, forwarding pictures, um, the only ones, the only things that you have to worry about in that regard are, <coughs> excuse me, PDF files portable document format. In other words, somebody is sending you a document to look at. Yeah. And if it's in PDF format, it can have malicious code in it that um, will not activate until you open it in a PDF reader. 
Yes. Sometimes you get email pictures, and the picture is bigger than the screen. Oh yeah. It's smaller. Um, um, somebody talked to me about that. That's not my question. It's the lady sitting beside me. <laughs> she's too shy to ask. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I, I know how to do it. I was trying to explain it to him, so I said that was a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm trying to explain it to myself. That's why I'm trying to explain it to myself. Yeah. Oh, I know my own. Did you see um, that? Did you witness that? Typically, the best way, like, from what I experienced, you just click on the picture and it resizes it. In some cases, uh, somebody called me the, the other day about um, their pictures would not resize for email sending. Click sending an email. Screen. Okay. Um, I, I would say that uh, the person on the other end is going to get the picture resized properly. Unless, you know, in most cases, the picture on the other end of the send gets the picture resized properly. It's, it's going to be ginormous in your sent items folder. If you take, if you take a look at that. Um, uh, what it was is I received an, uh, a picture in my email today that could not be looked at. It was too large. Yeah. So I just right clicked it. Yeah. Sent it to my pictures. Yeah. Then opened it. Yeah. It and fine. yeah, and and you op what you've done is you've opened it in the software for your pictures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the um, what's happened is that uh, if you tried to open it in email, um, the email couldn't resize the picture to what we call an inline look. Right. All right. When I did this, uh, when I composed this email, and uh, I pasted this in here, okay, what it did was it it uh, pasted this picture into what we call an inline look, and in in this case, it resized the picture to the window I had. Right. If the inline look is somehow damaged um, in email. It, this picture should have been about four times the size of this window, okay? But it wasn't. Inline look, resized proper. Um, when you get, um, if you add a picture like that to send, it's going to look okay. It's when you open up uh, your sent mail folder and look at how the picture was sent, then it will be ginormous, but don't worry about it. The person on the other end is getting the right size picture for their screen. So whoever sent it to me didn't send it properly. To um, sized? Yes, probably yes. Uh, if you look at the size of the picture, it might be two megs. They should have sent it to you at about 200 kilobytes. 200, 600 kilobytes, something like that, which resizes it down to a quarter or an eighth of its size on the screen. Okay, uh, That's something that uh, resizing pictures for email is uh, something that uh, we should get into um, but you have to have to, to show people properly. You've got to have a, ten different email packages to show them. Well it works here and it works here and it works like this and it works like that. It, it can make uh, you crazy. She might, hey, she might have sent that picture Phone. Yeah, could could have been, could have been. Um, now, pictures that you get from Facebook or Instagram or stuff like that have <coughs> have been resized already. Facebook resized that picture for its own purposes. Okay, so that picture might have been two megs on somebody's phone when they uploaded it to Facebook, but by the time it got here, it was much much smaller. So they resize it to their own purposes. Um, that's how we get to this. Um, the last one was the VLC thing. Okay, VLC. Now, um, what this uh, email is asking is, should I uh, download um, 
VLC. Uh, first off, do you have a copy of VLC already? What is What's that? VLC? That VLC is that media player that I always use. <laughs> Back to basics. Back to basics. <laughs> okay, so we'll just, we'll find it here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, VLC is this media player. Uh, if you have an old version of it, it's going to look like this anyway. Okay, if you have an old version of it. Yeah, no, this is not Windows. Oh, it's not Windows. No, no. This is from, uh, from VLC. Um, Video Land Client is called. But uh, if you open it up and you go to Help and you go to About, no. It will tell you the version you have. This is 2.2.1. This is the latest version. Does uh, Windows 10 come with this? No, no. You Does have to have download it? this. Okay. Um, if you have an old version of it, it might be 1.9 or 1.8 point something. Yes, you can update this. If it's still working properly, uh, why fool with it? If it's still working properly, if it's playing your music, playing your movies, don't fool with it. But you can get the latest version if you like. The way to do that is to uh, go to help and you'll see an entry for check for updates. And if you have an old version, it will prompt you to download and install the update. Now you don't have to make VLC um, you don't have to uninstall it. We'll just oh, uh, install it, the new version right over top of the old one. It will be seamless. Okay? So uh, that's if you do not have VLC. If you do not have VLC, we're going to go to a place where you can get it. What you going to do with it when you get it? <laughs> you're going to install it. I know what and you then do. you're going to use it to play your movies. And to play your music. <laughs> yes, videos, movies too. Music. V Video Land Client, VLC player. I have yet to find a codec that it won't play. There are, as far as I know, there aren't any. A codec, it will even play Blu ray. As far as I know, there well, is no codec that it will not play. I mean, as long as your DVD drive can read Blu ray. Yep. Okay, so um, we're going to uh, go to a place where we can get VLC player. So just type in in your search bar VLC and it will take you to videolan.org. Right here, VLC index. You want to download it for Windows and You'll click on download VLC and, um, and it will download to your downloads folder. You go there, click, uh, click on it uh, to begin the installation progress, process. I'm not going to do that now because I have VLC already installed. Um, but uh, there you go. That's how you do it if you don't have it. Just search for VLC and it will take you to Video Land, v -V -I -D -E -O -L -A -N dot org, org, and that's the place you get it from. Don't get it from any other places that might try and say, "Oh, well, we've got a great version of it." No, they don't. You get it from you get it from the place that made it. Um, they got a great version. It's called Doom and Destruction. Yes. That will be doom and destruction. Um, now if there's already a, another video player on your computer, is this going to quarrel? No. And here's, some, here's something um, that I, I need to show you about um, for Windows 10. Windows 7 takes care of itself. Windows XP always took care of itself. Uh, it would, uh, if you put video in, uh, or VLC player on your computer, it would just say, okay, uh, I'm going to let VLC take over and play any media file that it finds. Any kind of media. We'll let Video Land do it. But in the case of Windows 10, you have to tell it. 
And so you're going to go to the settings uh, gear right here uh, from, your, from your windows. Click on settings. It will open up the, uh, the settings folder. And I believe it's devices. Click on devices. No, it's um, system. System? System. Why, would it Why didn't I know that? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, apps. Okay. And you're going to click on default apps. Okay. System default apps. And it's going to ask you to choose the default app for music. You can, um, whatever is there, you can click on it and it will give you an option of, well, you can use the Groove Music Player, uh, Movie Maker, VLC, or Windows Media Player. But in my case, I chose uh, VLC. This is something you should do if you don't. Uh, Windows will become confused about how it, it uh, wants to play um, these kinds of files. The same thing uh, holds true with uh, the video player. You're going to choose uh, the video, uh, the VLC media player for video. Okay, just simply by clicking on whatever's there, and it will give you the options that it has to change to. And once you've loaded VLC, it will be that option and you just click on it. Um, so for, for music and video, that's what you sort of need to do to get VLC to, to play properly in Windows 10. Um, let's not get any more confused than we are. <laughs> Um, the other thing that you can do if you're having trouble with this is you can open um, VLC. Then you can go and look for um, you can look for a piece of uh, um, a piece of music that you might have and just simply drag it over from where it lives to VLC player and lo and behold it's playing music just simply by dragging it over the same thing with movies if you have a movie just drag the, the file to the VLC player and it works and you won't lose it out of your file no do you have to drag it back in? No. Just close it and you're on. Good old banjo. <laughs> okay, Elvis. <almost. laughs> Good old banjo. Uh, Doc Watson. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions? Well, there was no more in, in Gmail. Any questions from the floor? Yes. Follow up from last week. Yes. Um, Adware cleaner. Yes. Put it on. Uh, went to my downloads and opened it up and accepted it and everything else. Scanned. Yep. Told me I had 37 uh, threats. Yeah. And most of them in pokey, whatever that mm, pokey is. Yeah. Went to clean, and it about five seconds into clean, it's not responding. Twice I tried it twice. Uh, something wrong or. <laughs> yeah, I I would say uh, re-download it. Get yeah yeah, take it out, re-download it, and uh, th maybe that the next version will work a little better. I have no idea. Yeah. So I, I wondered, they were all in there apparently, I'm wondering what the heck that is. Well, uh, if, if you don't play these pokey games... No, I don't. Okay, go to your control panel. Yeah. And see if you can find these games in there. Okay. And if they're in control panel, um, uh, under uh, programs and features, yeah. unload them from there. Just delete them from there. Alright, something must have gone in way yeah. 
But uh, I, I would say re-downloading um, that ADW cleaner uh, may very well take care of your problem. I thought maybe Windows was trying to put a download in or, or an update in or something. No, I can't, I can't so see where it would. Uh, if you've run malware bytes in behind it and it found a few of them, Malware, I ran my malware then the next day and it didn't find any threats at all. Where yeah, yeah. Um, ADW Cleaner, there are different things that it doesn't like. I mean, and, and as we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago, um, ADW Cleaner is now part of Malware Bytes, mm -hmm. so they're going to start integrating the, um, yeah. the, the malware detection uh, processes of Malware Bytes and ADW Cleaner. They will take the best of breed. I went to the tools and downloaded it from there, and it says it's malware, part of malware, but yeah. right under, underneath tools was the malware website, and should I, I was wondering if I should have gone on there to get ADW. ADW. No, where you want to um, where you want to get ADW cleaner from tools. is um, um, let me just uh, ADW. Cleaner. It should be, yeah, it should be downloading from tooslib.net. That's the one I did. If, yes. Yeah, if you're getting it from there, you're getting it from the right spot. Okay. Now, on Firefox, that page is different. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God. So the first one includes it, but it's at premium. Yeah. Um, Firefox allows you to do different, uh, it allows for Google to do different kinds of search parameters. Let me just DDW Cleaner. Okay, it, it came up with the, with the same thing. Okay, ADW Cleaner. So it seems to be okay that way. I don't know what it's doing for me. Now, you, you see here that you're getting ADW Cleaner download from bleeping computer no, it was from all yeah but um, unless you really know what you're looking at always get these kinds of tools from the author's website here it is at downloads.cnet a place I hate don't do that no this other page has and yeah. it does come up with the um, the guy punching the ball you know the yeah but it's premium yeah so you have to um Okay, uh, I think we're we're just about. Any, any other questions? One more. Yes. Good dictionary to put on. A good dictionary. Merriam-Webster's. Well, uh, pardon me. Merriam-Webster. What's wrong okay. with that? All right. Yeah, I went through a million of them. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's Google. Uh, uh, Google is a great dictionary. Really. Because there's uh, different ones that you go in, say you're reading something there, and you stuck out a word, you just click it and bang, the whole thing comes up, tells you what it is. Okay. See you yeah. later, and then. Yeah. I mean, there's dictionary.com. There's that Wikipedia. And then what, is it going to put about a thousand search engines in my Google? All depends on where you get it from. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's dictionary.com. Yeah. They're, they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, like I say, to... to um, yeah. And then you yeah. can also go to... Uh, let us just say that um, well, what's a word you would look up? Um, oh, <laughs> give me a word. Somebody give me a word. Renine. Flabbergasted. Okay. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. All right. Now, the th yeah, the thing about Google is it helps you with the spelling. Yeah, it okay. yeah. And it also says, okay, flabbergasted definition. That's what you want. Yeah. Right? Okay, so let's click on that. I'll take a guess. <laughs> and there it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, surprise, someone greatly astonished. Okay, but the, there was one that I come across, and I can't even remember which one it was. And like I said, if you're reading something, you just click on the word. And yeah. Zoom comes up and tells you everything about it. And then just click over there. Yeah. And back to you yeah. That that can be done, but you can also get in Google. You can also get a thesaurus. Yeah. Flabbergasted from a thesaurus. So you've got synonyms, antonyms. Okay. 
Dumbfounded. Nonplus. Stunned. Yeah. Overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. So there's a thesaurus. Okay. Abash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unabashed. Very simple thing to do, Albert. How do you make a list of names of a club that you want to send a regular email to, but you don't want to every time type in the name? I just want the cluster. Okay, what are you using for email? Are you using Windows Live Mail? Hotmail. You're using Hotmail. Okay, so you go to uh, Outlook.com, right? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, okay, I think, I think that's what you're doing. Um, I do not use Outlook.com myself, and so I don't know a whole great deal about it, but... Um, if you do this, if you go to um, YouTube, okay, if you go to YouTube and you do a search for Outlook, um, and what would we be looking for, James? We would be looking for... 2016 pretty much. Um, we would be looking for what's... Uh, Outlook 2016 tutorials. Yeah, okay. But I want to see if I can drill down um, Outlook addresses. Okay. And let's see what that gives us. Okay. Um, There might be something here. Um, somewhere in here there's going to be a video on how to make um, addresses uh, for uh, certain kinds of mailings. Okay? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how to do it because I don't use Outlook. I'm sorry. But when when I when I send uh, emails to the club, there are four yeah, there yeah. are forty recipients. Yeah. Okay. I use uh, Windows Live Mail to do that. Okay. I use Windows Live Mail to do that. So I've got all of my contacts in Windows Live Mail, and then I set up um, a. a an address book just for the computer club. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. And when I want to send just to the computer club, that's the address book I use. Send to everybody in this book. But I don't know how to do that in Outlook. I know it can be done, but I don't know how to do it. I could probably figure it out. James, can I have your phone number? <laughs> well, no, I'll do it, I'll do it for uh, the next thing. Because I, I do have an Outlook account. I just never use it. I'm just not sure. I just Is there a difference know. between the app and the uh, Outlook that you're saying? Like Outlook.com? Outlook.com is a website. Yeah, Outlook.com is, the, is the, Outlook the website version app. of the app. Because the app, um, I think, don't, doesn't exist no longer. There's an app on Yeah, It comes yeah. with uh, Windows. It comes with Windows 10. Never used to. I thought they got rid of it. That's why they made the no, Outlook Pro, uh, website. Yeah. yeah. In any event, folk, it's a little after 2 o'clock, so we're going to call a halt to this. Uh, thanks very much for coming. We will assemble again in two weeks. I will send you an email uh, confirming that, and I'll get this video up online as quickly as I can. Thank you. Thank you. That's Computer Club Listen for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.